Hi, today I'm going to show you how I made a moxen vise. The moxen or twin screw vise was described in Mechanic Exercises by Joseph Moxon, um, which was published in 1694. He doesn't claim to have invented the vise and he lists it as one of the standard methods for holding a workpiece. The 1800s saw a rise in lathes being used to turn screw threads, so the popularity of vices like this um, was on the rise but screws have been used since at least the 3rd century BC for moving water and the Romans are known to have used uh, screw presses for olives and wine in the 1st century AD. So the vise is as simple as it gets. A length of threaded bar and nuts are used to compress vise chops with the workpiece in between holding it steady. I start out by making holes on the front chop and drilling with a 20mm forstner bit. I then clamp the chop to the front of the apron and use it to, as a guide for the holes that are going to be in the apron. I also clamp some bits of scrap to the back to reduce blowout as the forstner bit comes out the back. I cut the threaded bar in two. This leaves the vise with close to 400mm max extension, which is much bigger than the weight it could hold. I'll use the extra length for some support guides at the back. Put the length of threaded rod into the apron and mark the nut shapes. Then remove the material with a chisel. I go a smidge deeper than the nut. The nut's about 15 mil, so I'm aiming for about 16. These hold the threaded bar to the bench. I then add a nut to the back and lock the bar in place. Cleaning up the chop, so I take the edges off with a router and sandpaper. Um, fitting the chop is fairly straightforward, but as I'm using 20mm holes on a 20mm bar, I have to be fairly square as I go in. Quick check seems good enough. Now for some handles. The first one was wood and I just used an old, old off cut. I mark the nut, take out the material with the chisel, same as before. Ideally I would have used something which had the grain running at 90 degrees to this so it was a little bit stronger when I was pushing it down. Quickly cut off the corners and take the edges off with a rasp and some sandpaper. And there it is. So this vice was cheap, uh, very cheap. I know it's annoying on a video when someone gets most of the parts for free, but as I used the bench apron and had an off cut from that when I was building it, the front chop and the back chop cost me nothing. The bar, the nuts and the washers cost me about 24 pound to buy, but I only used four of each. The cost of the materials used was about 15 pounds. Next, I made a couple of simple 3D printed handles. If you aren't interested in some very, very basic CAD, then click away now. I'm gonna go through how I drew them in real time. It takes about three minutes. For this, I'm using 3D Builder from Microsoft. Uh, it's free and fairly easy to use. So first of all, I'll make a new scene. You can change the tilt and yaw by holding down the left mouse button and moving around, and you can pan around with the right mouse button. First I insert a cylinder and resize it to 42mm diameter, 40mm tall. Next I insert a torus and size it to 80mm diameter. I want a smooth interface between, between these parts. So I insert a second cylinder and size it to 60mm diameter, 20mm tall. I then change the Z position to be 10mm up, making the 20mm part flush with the ground. Part of this is to make sure that the torus is well connected to the, the central hub um, and also that the printed part will have a good flat face for, for nice bed adhesion. Now we need to make a hole for the bar, so I insert another cylinder, resize it to 20.5mm and 60mm tall. As I'm going to remove this shape later, I'm going to make sure it passes well through all the faces of the part that I'm working on. Next I insert a hexagon. 
and move it up close to about the right place. Then lock the relative dimensions. An M20 nut is 30mm across the flats. By locking the shape, it scales to make the point to point distance correct too. Then unlock it and make it 17mm tall. I shift it into place manually until it's about flush with the top surface, then bump it up half a mil to make sure I don't end up with an infinitely thin face when I remove the part. Now I select the separate parts of my model with shift click and merge them into a single shape. I now subtract the hexagon to make space for the nut and subtract the central cylinder to make space for the threaded bar. Delete this leftover bit. That looks about done. I quickly change the colour to check everything has been merged properly into one part. And save it. I save as the default format and also as an STL for printing. I used a 0.2mm layer height which is pretty rough, 40% infill, so each one took about 4 hours to print. I'm adding Jubilee clips and I'm hoping that this is going to reduce the chance that if I turn it too hard the nut will blow out the plastic. Um, only time will tell if this works. Printing may not be the best way to make handles um, because just making wooden ones was so quick but it does allow rapid iteration and I wanted to do it. I have a basic shape now I could make a bit more interesting or I could reinforce it if and when these break. Thanks for watching. Have fun with your builds. Bye.